Hello THL, welcome to Salty Saturday, an exciting week three slate of matchups for you this evening. Before we get to that, I would like to welcome my Anadon to the cast team Hello. this evening. Hello! Hey, he's here still, what? that's awesome. What night is it? This is weird. I don't know, you just seem to be on like everything in THL lately, so uh, I can completely see you kind of losing track of time. Uh, you know, I'm I'm trying to go for that content award again. I know Ted was closing in a little bit uh, earlier this season. He he did like a eight hour, you know, with a couple breaks, but was just <laughs> casting all day one Friday. So now I'm saying I got to put in the work. Can't have him beat me. So here I am, ready to go. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a, our second time casting together. I think. I think our I first so. official though. Yeah, I think we did like, uh, you know, one kind of unexpected cast. This was the first mm -hmm. one we planned and said, you know, we're going to do this. And I could not be more excited. Uh, I love that Philly work ethic out of you. That's that's the type of stuff, <laughs> you know, that dreams are made of, you know, the invincible Mark yeah, Wahlberg. Exactly I, can't, I can't think of his word. real name. Uh, 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 good question. Is, uh, it, is it is that Vince? Vince, Vince Papali? Papali. Vince Papali. That's it. Yep. You got it. Yeah. That I was an it. OK movie. Whew. It was, certainly was OK. <laughs> uh, well, there's the been matches... way better Philly movies than that. Oh, but... oh, Rocky for one, yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hopefully the matches tonight are more than just okay. Uh, we do have <laughs> we do have two two matches that I expect to be fun to watch. Uh, starting off with Electa Buzz of Team No Pros here. He'll be playing against Silver T Fox Demon of the Burninators. That's a hero matchup, so that'll be uh, last hero standing for anybody not initiated with that. That means they cannot uh, play a deck once it has been defeated. And uh, just yeah. to confuse everyone as much as possible, our second match later on will be Iran Mexico of Fourth and Inches versus Yellow Dart of Dad Legend, and that is a conquest match. So the exact opposite you have to win with every deck. So uh, yeah, we'll you know remind you as we go along here. But uh, let's talk about our first matchup tonight. Uh, we already know uh, there's a there's mm -hmm. a rogue ban across the board here. Uh, both both players will not be allowed to play rogue, which means it is a true mirror match. Hunter Priest. Warlock for each player. So, uh, Mayanadon, as we know, this is closed deck list, uh, so we yeah. don't have the benefit of knowing what list they're playing. Do you think either player has a specific advantage here, based on what you've seen in the past? Yeah, based on based on what I know about the players, it's it is a little bit tough to to predict. I think both have had a lot of success um, so far in Hero. I think last season, Electabuzz had a pretty solid season. Z Silver, you know having a good season in hero also I think played in pro last season with, with some good success. So uh, definitely some good contenders in that, in that lower seed. And this is a big match for both of them. We've got team Rome pros here at eight points and the Burnators at 10. Uh, and they're, they're kind of neck and neck here. Uh, this, a win for either team would, would make a huge difference. And, and they're actually right next to each other in points for on the season so far. So this could really determine standings and potential uh, playoff, uh, you know, uh, sort of I know we're a little bit early in the season but it could still have some sort of implications for the playoffs yeah every match counts equally and, and na naturally you want to think that at the end of the season those matches mean so much more but mm -hmm. you can always look back to an early game uh, you know week two week three like we are now and say man if we had just won that one match or this one series it could have been the difference uh, and, you know it's it's hard to know until we get the closer to the playoffs but mm -hmm. yeah every everything's important and uh burn naders have the advantage right now so silver will try to close it out for them tonight um mm -hmm. uh, i think we're just about ready to go here so i can let the players know uh we will be specking electabuzz on the bottom and you'll see silver on the top uh let's let's do this i'm gonna let him let him go and uh yeah we'll hop in a game yeah, absolutely. And and one thing to note, actually, I think if it does go to game five, if Silver wins like, to game five, uh, there could still be a tie uh, with a, a sweep for Agent uh, PWE as the, the final game. So there's there even this game, even if Silver wins, if it's not a, you know, a dominant win, the, you know, the 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 week is still uh, available to both both teams. Absolutely. It's always fun to see matches where, you know, they're, everything, not everything necessarily riding on this match, but you know it's going to be mm -hmm. very important to the overall, uh, you know, week standings here. So they are getting going. We will spec them here in just a second. Yeah, do you have any predictions for that that first uh, deck? Usually, I think, in, in Hero, you try to bring the deck you think might have the potential to sweep game one. Uh, and then from there, you kind of try to counter Q. So what what do you think maybe we'll see from from both players here? I think Hunter. Hunter's a pretty favorite one uh, for, for a lot of players there, is it just has that, 
you know, uh, the sweet potential where if it just gets rolling, if you're playing something like Face Hunter or Quest Hunter, it can beat anything. So maybe one of them might try to bring a priest to, you know, put the kibosh on that. That might be the good counter cue strategy here. Yeah, and we'll see. And it actually, uh, the players disagree with us. Electaba is bringing that Warlock first and Silver with the Priest. You are beating me into the game here as I'm still loading right now, which is why you're not seeing anything on the screen. But uh, I assure you that will be happening momentarily here. Uh, spoilers. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, but yeah, this, this, uh, are you in now? Can I, can I talk about we, the, the hands without ruining anything? Absolutely. All right. Uh, amazing, yeah. So Electabuzz looks like a, what appears to be some sort of zoo list uh, based on that knife juggler uh, and the beaming sidekick. Uh, where Silver running the Res Priest, uh, the quest list. So I have to feel like this this might be Priest favors. If the Priest is able to stabilize, I think it, it, it does uh, a pretty good job. The zoo has a lot of potential for the early games, so... Um, could get there, but if it doesn't get there early enough, uh, it just it just you know slows down and yeah, and, uh, it really has priest. to has to get in under that potential heal and taunt wall. And I mean, we'll see if maybe there's a tech in here for Electabuzz that's uh, you know maybe a Spellbreaker or something along those lines to help push some late game damage. But uh, but yeah, you're you're absolutely correct about that. Interesting play there by by Silver. Actually, I I wonder why chose not to use the hero power to, to accelerate the quest a little bit. The face damage to the, the Warlock is really, you know, not important in this matchup. Absolutely. Uh, I think I think you definitely heal all day there. Uh, the quest is one of the most important ways you win this matchup, and he's opting to heal again, but only his own face this time. So yeah, interesting plays here so far. Uh, also choosing not to just go in with the cultist last turn, going for the, the juggler, even though it didn't really get that much value just yet. Um, so that that is a little interesting to me, although maybe maybe hoping to, to play this maniac and get the three juggles, and, and that's what he was setting up for on Electabuzz's side. I would say that or Fiendish Rites is probably mm -hmm. uh, the play here. Fiendish Rites only gives you the two juggles, but does give you the extra but two you damage do. on your minions. Yep. Yep, I think that kind of chip damage. It really, it really depends, sort of how you, how you want to play this match. We do see the Galakron in hand, so that's one invoke down already, uh, two in hand. So one more invoke off of the top, and that Galakron is fully active with the weapon, which you really, really want to get uh, as this zoo lock uh, into the priest. Silver does have the option here. I was going to say either mass the spell, which he is going to do, or play the Sand of Water Bear if he wants to just maximize mana and get the heal in. But he opts to play the Master Spell, draw a card, and uh, picks up Xerix. And that's not a bad draw, but, you know, turn 9 might just be too late for him if he doesn't start uh, getting some board presence. Yeah, he does have one of the, the most important cards uh, into this matchup, though, in the hand that you can play next turn with the Carta Defender. And with the Psychopomp to follow up, if, if the, the Carta gets cleared, this Psychopomp can just make another one and just, that's a ton of heal. We're looking at, uh, you know, for the first one, six heal, and then another six plus that damage, and, you know, it clears off these little minions. So uh, we'll see if there's anything, like you said, if there's any tech in, in Electabuzz's deck to, to answer that or deal with that. Honestly, once he picked up the Kartik Defender there on uh, that last draw, that might have altered the case to not play Santoff, because like you said, you're going to play that Kartik all day on six right now, and that means it's the only thing in the death pool for Psycho Pomp to pull back, which is, of course, what you exactly. really, really want. Yeah, so let's see if that's that's the play we're going to we're gonna see here. I do expect it to come down. I, I don't really see anything else that appealing. I think play, not playing it is is kind of playing not to lose. Like if you're you're scared about the seven one that's out on board right now, uh, that would be the the argument against it. But I don't think that that's the right thing to do. So here I agree with getting the card defender now. And this is an interesting uh, choosing to use that uh, to do some trades. I think you really want to get the seat giant down. It's, it's as cheap as it's ever going to get. Yeah, now you can you can even on top of that do a couple more trades uh, or trade one more minion in and get a spell. Maybe there's a spell in the deck that uh, or in the in the with the class that, that could make a difference here. No, choosing to okay. Yeah, you can only play one of them here. You just don't have the board space. 
Uh, yeah, you could try to play the flame interest to push a little bit and, and you know set up some damage, but plague of flames is interesting. There's a, a similar, you know, a different version of this this deck that's a little bit more controlly that runs that um, because of all the one one tokens you're you're producing. It's really really powerful into wide boards of uh, big minions, which priests can do. So I, I kind of would have liked to see that for. Uh, you know, you're already pushing enough damage. This this shadow bolt is probably not going to make or break the game. Well, what so, I would say, I the mean, shadow bolt is a perfect lineup for this coming back cartoon defender it is. here. Yeah, it certainly it certainly works out well in this situation. But I do think, uh, you know, if you're not expecting this play specifically, but I think uh, it's actually lethal right now. Yeah, with the seven one and the yeah. eight eight, it's definitely lethal. I I I mean, we're healing for six we're going up to 18 but you only have to push one of these and actually yeah the the uh <laughs> making the the better play than i would have with the shadow vault uh to set up for for lethal this turn there you go that's the quick game one uh what do you think we're gonna see for to counter this too from uh, from electabuzz what do you think silver is gonna bring uh, out of those two remaining classes well, I mean, that's a great question here. Uh, if you're going to counter the Warlock, I would have to say you're probably going to look to maybe play the Priest of your own if you're playing that quest res. Hmm. I'm sorry. I did this backwards. Um, <laughs> he just lost the Priest. Ah. Um, I would say if you're playing, like, Hand Warlock, Gala Warlock, you might go with that. But Hunter is a consideration here. But I would probably go with the Warlock myself. Yeah, just go for the mirror. Uh, Silver disagrees. Maybe this Hunter... It could be Quest Hunter, I think, does a, a decent job in the zoo, if I'm not mistaken. It just has good ways to deal with those minions uh, and eventually just over, you know, or just beat the, the board. Uh, but this does look like yeah. it is it is Quest, yeah. So uh, I could see that making a lot of sense here, and that's, that's not a bad start. Um, well, the Quest you know, Hunter tends to finish you off by using your own board against you because of the Unleash the Hounds plus finish the quest at that moment and then hit you with the Romkin's Roar and now all of a sudden you get yep. swung back at for you know 15 plus damage. Yeah we did see this quest uh, quest hunter struggle a lot yesterday. Uh, I think it, it lost three games if I remember correctly. Um, this was in, in uh, Legacy so it was Conquest format. It's a little different but we will see if it, it has a little bit more success today. Strong start, though, for the Warlock again for Electabuzz. He, he's going to need something to play. Hopefully, you know, he picks it up here on his third draw. But right now, uh, you know, that Diving Griffin is the only reason that 3-4 is not going get, to get home a couple times. Yeah, that Diving Griffin uh, doing a great job there. Uh, something maybe worth considering last turn uh, with the curve. Maybe you you know Diving Griffin is a, is a common card in, in the Quest Hunter. And sort of play around that. It's going to die either way to your... Uh, your flame imp, so maybe tapping last turn and not buffing would have made a difference, but I guess you're you're playing around one thing or the other, right? Because Spring Paw would have dealt with the three two, where it wouldn't have dealt with the three four. I think if if you're paying attention to what he kept in the mulligan and seeing what might mm -hmm. might have been more likely, he would probably be more likely to keep a Spring Paw than he would be to keep a Diving Griffin. Uh, you might keep it if, if your hand is particularly good outside of it. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that was where you might you might look to hand track and consider what. Uh, you know whether or not to play that that beam and sidekick. Yeah, but we are starting to curve out pretty well for Electabuzz. Uh, the double shield in the hand that activates the Worshipper, which is going to just draw a ton uh, in a couple turns, and that's that's something that is really, really, really powerful. That that whole mechanic has allowed Galakron Warlock, I think, to function. Now, on the on the flip side for Silver, he's got a hand of very, very high cost cards, and you mm -hmm. want to be playing. You know, obviously, as much as you can on every turn to try and uh, maximize the expediency, which we finish that quest. And he is just not getting that option. Even if he drops Halazi next turn, uh, it's going to only put, what, four? Uh, I believe it'll put four links in his hand, and then he'll have a burn yeah, four after links. that. Exactly. Yeah, it's a pretty awkward situation. I think, I think we might even just see Zilliax. The heal is really, really important, but. Uh, and you, you kind of like getting that on your. Um, what is that uh, that new uh, legendary the the Uranus. dragon no 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 the the dragon uh, bolt or something not dragon bolt the oh oh, oh yes I know what you're talking about dragon bane dragon's bane yeah so dragon's bane that's a really powerful play playing a dragon's bane and and, and Ziliax on top of it 
uh, when you hear a power, actually the five damage does heal you as well. So if you're afraid of dying ever, uh, you know, sometimes that combo can really do wonders. Uh, we don't see the, the dragon's being in the hand, so uh, I think making the right read there and kind of getting the, the heal now while you can and uh, just play playable cards because you are starting to fall behind. And this is going to be a big, big turn here for Lectabuzz. I like this move. Yeah. As soon as soon as he drew, <laughs> as soon as he drew that Sea Giant and, and had that option in his hand, just get down a whole lot of stuff. But uh, this is interesting that we have we have the Unleash the Hounds in the hand for Silver, and we also have the uh, Varanus in hand as well. But he can't play both this turn. If he just plays Varanus, he's pretty much dead. Yeah, he's at one as far as we can tell. Uh, but any damage off of the top would would seal it. Um, so I think, and this is kind of kind of rough too. It does summon a bunch, but you get to kill one minion. Wait, is he? He's going to burn the side quest as well this way. Yep, this that's exactly right. When you do when you do it this way, you you burn the side quest. The Griffin does not spawn, which would have made right. some better trades here. Usually you're not too upset about that with this deck. That is something that I've noticed that it can happen, but usually you're happy to summon seven minions and you're okay that you don't get the four four. But in this situation, when you're facing uh, one damage off, you probably don't well, want to face it. And now it's exactly the off the Leroy well. off the top. <laughs> I did. Yeah. And that's two to nothing. This Warlock, the Zoo, is just dominating. These starts have been just crazy fast nothing that that you know not much that you can do on the other side especially with that hand silver getting probably all of the top end in the deck in in his first you know six or seven cards yeah without knowing the exact list it's hard to, to know for sure but having seen and played the quest hunter myself i can i can only imagine there weren't too many worse draws in the deck for him over those last few turns yeah so now silver gonna have to hope that this Warlock can do the same thing that Electabuzz's Warlock is doing and get a potential reverse sweep, but he's going to have to start with the mirror. And Direwolf Alpha, as we can see in the mulligan here, which I don't think is a standard inclusion in the deck. No, I don't think so either. Either way, it looks like pretty much a full toss for Silver, I would imagine, and uh, Electabuzz, knowing that he's going into Warlock Mirror, might just elect to keep that Sea Giant. Yeah, it's certainly a powerful swing card for the matchup because everyone's going to be vying for that board state and eventually someone's going to stick and you can get that giant down. Uh, choosing not to keep it, though. And uh, both oh, players going for the full mulligan. And it's back, yeah. <laughs> I, th I think that he will be happy that that came back. However, uh, the rest of his hand is not exactly uh, conducive to uh, the, the explosive start he would want. Meanwhile, yeah. Silver's got a couple early game cards to play. Yeah, I really like the Battle Mage over the Void Walker here. You are, you have the initiative. There's not really two damage from the Warlock that this this list normally plays that can deal with this uh, to start, and it contests a lot of your really powerful starts. Not that we see any in the hand right now. I like that pickup of the of the beaming sidekick. You toss that down on that Void Walker, and you've got something that doesn't go uh, doesn't go away very easily here. It's going to let that Blazing Battle Mage get home at least for another turn or two. Yeah, and now now you've got a choice. You can try to curve out a little better, or you can uh, you know coin out just to to try to fight for board as best as possible. Uh, that does leave you with not really a, a great play next turn unless you top deck something, uh, but it might just have to happen. Alternatively, you can wait and then you can coin four, uh, or play the three drop, and then it's just it's it's a little awkward. Uh, it is a little awkward, and and we have the advantage of seeing what's in Silver's hand. But I like the tap here. Uh, I like yeah. the, the thought of going coin uh, Devoted Maniac and then trying to reestablish board after that because you have the two shields of Galakrond in hand. Yeah, I actually might even consider playing the Dragon Blight Cultist this turn into uh, coin, shield, and then shield again just because you're so far behind here. And again, no, no real way to deal with this 6-1. So there's a lot, a lot of damage potential there. Right, and if you're looking, if you're if you're looking across the board here as Electabuzz, you see eight, nine, ten, just twelve sitting there on board. Uh, a grim rally is going to give him another five. So right there, if he has that in hand, you're already down to five next turn, and uh, even one shield of Galakrond isn't going to save you from that. 
That's true. That is that is certainly true. Uh, so the, your your alternative options are exactly this. So play the Devoted Maniac. Maybe next turn uh, you can get the Sea Giant down with a couple other cards. Uh, you, you know, the Cultist into a Sea Giant and uh, Beanie Sidekick. The <laughs> there's, the, there's the Grim Rally, by the way. Wow. Is that actually... How much damage are we looking at now with that? Uh, uh, that's that's going to put him down to four. Plus six. Uh, plus the Grim Rally would be lethal, actually. Uh, next well, turn. Yeah, I see. He'll like, yeah, yeah. this turn. Here's a thought for for last turn. What would you have thought about Mecharu plus the beaming sidekick plus the sea giant? Just get you know as much stuff on board as possible for the uh, for the turn after. Not that it the, really matters. The Mecharu beaming sidekick and sea giant last turn. I don't think you can do that actually. Well, he coined into four, and the sea giant was at four. So if he coined and then played only one mana minions, he could have played the sea giant. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Turn. I see what you're saying. With still using the coin. Uh, but just playing out the the other minions. Yeah, no, I, I I agree with that. I think that maybe is a better play into uh, what you're seeing. You really need to start fighting, and uh, I don't I don't see it here. This is I don't really see any any option in here that that can save Electabuzz. So uh, you know the the tables have turned a little bit. The you know the warlock is getting the wins. The zoo warlock. It's won every single game of this series so far. Yeah, we're definitely seeing and the power of it, for sure. It might win the whole thing. That's at least what Silver is hoping here. At this point, to, to potentially get this to win the whole thing. And that is lethal. Nothing that can be done. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we're, we're moving on to game four, right? Yeah, game that four. That will be game four, yeah. And uh, now Silver's got a little, uh, I wouldn't say advantage, but he's got the most powerful deck in this matchup that we've seen so far. It seems, yeah. <laughs> so if he can uh, if he can do exactly what has done to him, uh, you know, he could he could end up reverse sweeping here. Yeah, we'll see. We didn't, you know, Electabuzz didn't have a choice but to stay on the Warlock, so uh, maybe he has a deck in mind for this. Uh, you know, he knows that the Warlock is picked by silver so maybe you know expecting the zoo has one of the hunter or priest there to counter uh, a deck like that maybe quest hunter again I i'm putting uh, my life savings on res priest if he's if he brought res priest and not combo i think it's got to be that mm -hmm. yeah i think it, you know that deck it's very close like we saw a really powerful start from the warlock can just edge it out but uh, if you are able to stabilize with the priest there's nothing the warlock can do so i i, I do agree i think the the priest maybe has this the safest bet uh, but no, they Electabuzz says Hunter. I think it does I not appear to be. Picking decks right now. <laughs> it Ooh, does not appear to be. Yeah, it's Highlander, and it's running that the new card that was just released with the the recent uh, adventure first wing, the fresh scent. Uh, I haven't actually seen a build that runs that for the Highlander. So I'm curious to see how that plays out. I, I, I will point out, uh, as this was pointed out to me today, it does not say friendly minion. So <laughs> people were, po were, were pointing out how a Zul'jin might result in uh, fresh scent being popped onto your opponent's stuff if it's a beast that's in play. So there could be some fun shenanigans yeah. there. But I, I, I was going to say there's usually no beast in Zoo Warlock, but uh, Electabuzz didn't see those uh, direwolves last game. Yeah, I, I don't imagine that's going to come in, into play here. But that is certainly an edge case. <laughs> it, it could it could happen. Uh, I'd love to see that happen, actually, now that you've, you've brought it up. Uh, but this this Dwarven Sharpshooter doing a really good job of, of fighting for the early board. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's the point place here where that Dire Wolf shines. It makes the trade Absolutely. with the Sharpshooter possible. And now, uh, you know, we'll see what Animal Companion rolls here for Electabuzz. Yeah, uh, probably exactly what you're hoping for in that I situation. Uh, this is awkward now. You can't really play. Uh, you you want to clear this if you can. Uh, so that means you can't play the evil genius, which is really what you wanted to do there. You wanted to push some damage and maybe play it. But stopping that. And, uh, ooh, okay. Now you've got a choice. Oh, Alex Straws is a winning card. But, but Unleash. Unleash deals with, they make a lot, a lot of 1-1s. One I, I think it I, has to be Unleash. It feels bad to just throw yeah. away Dragon Queen, but it, realistically, will you make it to 9 very consistently? I mean, right now it yeah. looks good. And, but uh, Yeah, but, will, you, will you make it to 9 and also be able to play it on 9 and not die that next turn? Well, we, we're uh, going to find out, I guess. Electabuzz says I can. I can do it. 
he he believes uh you know i i mean who are we to to judge i suppose because i've been wrong about everything tonight so i i bet you we, we're gonna see him slam that down and just immediately pick up like two huge taunts like the four eights with taunt and he's gonna or look the like seven a, seven he's gonna look like the big untargetable plays, you know? one oh, or yeah. yeah or the seven seven either or yeah okay so this desert spear gonna do a lot of work right now yes, uh, actually very, that's interesting matter. i haven't even thought about that interaction the fresh scent onto a locust i actually would have liked to see that there's not really a better play right now and that would have kept the the three one alive and you still could do it next turn so i'm actually definitely disappointed we didn't see that fresh scent i really don't like playing eagle horn bow here no, desert spear no, no, no. is so good into into warlock and I think uh, the other the other consideration there is with fresh scent. I mean, you're floating three mana anyway, so it's not like you're using right. that mana on something else. And now it's kind of awkward. Uh, you can play double fresh scent to clear this, uh, but it does not feel good, and you have no, to that... swing <laughs> first to do it. That is that is very uh, much the opposite of good, I believe. Yeah, troll bat rider. Uh, I guess you can troll bat rider. Varanus and just take out two things with your. I mean, you yeah. take four damage, but you're taking half of this board away, I suppose. Yeah, I, I, I guess that that's probably the better play. And you summon a seven six, and they don't currently have the board to deal with it. Luckily Although we for do Silver, see... he does have the option in his hand. Yeah. Yeah, with that knife juggler and the fiendish yeah, rights. I was. Oh, really? Ooh. <laughs> Choosing to play a little bit safer and maybe just push the face damage. You know what would have been a nice card to have right now? Uh, what would be a nice card to have right now? Unleash the Hounds. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, I thought you were talking about for Silver. And I was no, like, no, no, I'm not yeah. sure he's ever had a choice this game. <laughs> I see where you're, I see where you're going with it, though. Uh, this isn't a bad either. This is certainly uh, deals with you know the initial threat, heals you a little bit, and uh, you can push some damage. I think yeah, you do. I like, I mean, I it's like seven damage. damage. It's you, so you juicy. But man, oh man, Unleash would have been a nice clear as well. Even if he didn't use it as a clear, it would potentially be a lethal next turn if he opts to yeah. uh, not clear the Varanus, but... Uh, but yeah, here comes the knife juggler, uh, you know, a little, little later than we would have liked to see it ultimately, but uh, oof, not the right target for that. Yeah, not not the right target for what, you know, the inevitable trades. Choosing not to tap, I guess, uh, scared of the life total right now. Oh, I think you got to eagle horn bow and take out this 2-2 here first. If you're going to play deadly shot, you don't coin yeah. flip it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and I think that's what we're going to see. And you can still, you know, play Fairy Dragon on top of that just to put something on the board. Definitely. I think that's I think that is the the right move here. And you know, honestly, the board doesn't look too too bad for a Dragon Queen next turn, uh, depending yeah, on what Silver we, comes out. Yeah, we might with. have been wrong. This could work out really well. Just one invoke away on the other side for a fully invoked Galakron, and choosing to to hold on till till that uh, inevitability does happen. And well, there, there it is. is exactly what you're hoping for. Yeah, I think with it in your hand, you definitely want to play that since you know you've got Galakron for sure next turn, and then Kronk the, uh, or Kronks uh, with the X uh, the turn after that. And uh, All right. What's in the box? What dragons do we get? I mean, what else are we going to do here? I think it's got to be, right? Yeah. Life and hope. I don't see a better play. Haha, <laughs> you got the four oh, more dragons! And the Aeon wow, Reaver. Dragon Maw Scorcher. That's super that good into great. this deck. Yeah, Aeon Reaver. What is this card? Deal damage equal to it's it's uh you know it's the oh you can kill the the, the five oh, four yeah. there. Oh yeah. Oh, I kind of wow. like trading the three two or the four one for a little bit of security there because Dragon yeah. Queen is more than enough damage next turn alongside your hero power. Yeah, I and, uh, agree. I don't think there's much of anything here that that will answer that though. Well, let's see what four minis we get. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, none of those say taunt on them. No, they do not. Or rush. Well, or man. rush. Yeah. Are there any rush demons you can get? Well, no, not anymore. I don't think. Uh, do guard. Well, do guard was charged, but that thing is. Uh, yeah. Is uh, all of fame. Uh, so. Oh, a little bit of uh, wrong math there. Wasting the one damage that maybe could have healed for another three, but I don't think there's anything 
That's gonna save you here. Maybe Juggler first before the Galakron. I don't know if that four damage would have made a difference. The, yeah. Hmm. All right. He can't play these, unfortunately. Even if there's a, I mean, that one would have been good. That you could have taunt up the, uh, the Jaraxxus and heal for you know make a 17. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> health taunt, but. Not enough mana to do that this turn, and that'll be it. Uh, so the Warlock winning almost all the games, but finally losing in, in the, the last match of the series uh, to the Highlander Hunter. Wow. Never mind me. I'm, I'm over here in my own op world, and I'm just trying to get the right icons up, but I did not do that correctly, so... Uh, I apologize to the street viewers. I will fix that momentarily. <laughs> However, yes, uh, you know, impressive. We saw the power of Warlock and the Hunter, uh, you know, just got the job done there. I think uh, I think ultimately the right choice, of course, to play the Hunter being a secret Highlander Hunter instead of the quest or a face Hunter there. Yeah, it's certainly uh, I have seen a lot more of the Highlander Hunter recently uh, with some some good success. And it was able to beat that <clears throat> Warlock, and uh, with that that choice that maybe we didn't agree with, ending up working out, getting the four eight taunt to really seal the deal, and just a giant board of minions that the you know the Zulok can't deal with. So uh, yeah, I mean, well played by both players, but in the end, Warlock four one or four two, I guess. Warlock lost to Warlock too, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, it was uh, it was yeah. Warlock was a feature in every game that we saw. Yeah. It certainly was, and only losing technically one, you know, it tied one, one win, one loss, but only completely losing. Uh, Warlock didn't win just a single one of the matches, is what I'm trying to say. I know that it's hard to, you know, wrap your head around, but that's it. That's, 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 that's what happened. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, it, it, that's the power, I think, of the counter Q possibilities in Hero, uh, the last Hero standing format. It, It's definitely, I think... Um, lineups tend to get a little bit more interesting when we're when we're talking about last hero standing because you've got that give and take there and you just don't want to get swept out by one really powerful deck which uh you know uh, electos did a great job of avoiding mm -hmm. yeah i know i know you love your your last hero standing i think it's a great format <clears throat> not supported anymore by blizzard but it's still wonderful and i'm glad that we have it and uh you do quite a good job in in heroes so uh, it's oh, don't, interesting to don't bring that up i'm <laughs> 0 three right now <laughs> <laughs> well, you did good in Hero last yeah, season. Yeah, oh yeah. No, I've, I've lost triple the amount of games this season that I lost all of last season. I am just taking L's left and right. Here's how bad it was today for me while we're waiting for our <laughs> next players to get going here. Uh, I was playing Liquid Ox, and uh, mm -hmm. I tried to... I said GG to him after I lost game four, and it was two to two. So I was just that far... Amazing. Oh wait, no, that was pro. See, I'm so bad. I don't even know what 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 uh, series I'm playing. <laughs> yeah, no, we were. I was uh, I was up two one, and I tried to just GG the series away. And he was like, Nah, man, we still have to play. Uh, and then I lost anyway. But you know, oof. oof. I was just predicting the future. It's all it was. I was just trying you to knew. give him benefit of the doubt. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure you're playing great. There's there's definitely a lot of swing potential these days in Hearthstone. Uh, I myself have not been having too much success in Legacy, but uh, you know the rest of my team has been able to carry me so far, and we're going to see one of them uh, very shortly. Hopefully, continue to carry me. I, I think it's going to be a really good match. Uh, great transition because I do want to talk about this next match as well. And, and, and you mentioned you have a hand in it because of uh, your teammate Yellow Dart is one of our competitors. Uh, Ron Mexico has been uh, a player who has been unstoppable these last few seasons here in THL across really every series. Uh, he's in, the, you know, he's in legend right now as well. So we know he's a strong player and he's just, uh, he's tough to beat. Uh, so what, what yeah. do you, what do you think it's, this is also a full mirror match. We don't know what the bands are yet, but, uh, what, what do you, what, what is your overall thought here? Prediction, what we might see for ban and, uh, what would you like yeah. to see? Yeah, this one's an interesting one. Um, it's it's tough. Rogue is such a, a nice band these days. It does feel really, really like powerful and kind of getting rid of that option feels pretty good to me. Uh, but I have seen people lean Hunter as well. So I think I, I would have to guess one of those two, but uh, we'll have to see if the players agree. 
Yeah, they are uh, going to be getting uh, into the match here. We are we are a little bit ahead of pace since they were scheduled to play at 10, uh, but they will be getting into into game here uh, momentarily to get the bands for us. So we have a little bit of time. Uh, would you like to discuss some of, uh, you know, around the league action or around the series? Sorry, I can't say the L word uh, that, that we've seen this week in any of the series. Any any matches that have really piqued your interest? Um, yeah, let me let me take a look. Any. And man, putting me on the spot, there's tons of great matches. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's no shortage uh, every week of, of great action THL. And I will say, anybody who happens to stumble across the stream that is not a THL player, uh, please do feel free to join us on Discord. You can find that uh, below and also at our website, teamhearthlegends.com. And uh, you're always welcome to join the action. We are welcoming to all skill levels of players. Man, you're so good at your job. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> The highest I always phrase. forget. I, you know, I try. I try to. Uh, <laughs> I try to. To you know, get people to join and think about that stuff as well. But man, whew, that's why you're on the board, and I, I'm just here making content. Is that is that really the reason? I don't know if that's really the reason, but uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't want. I don't want you to sell yourself short either. Oh, thanks, thanks, buddy. I'm sure you're you're doing. You know, I, I do what I need to do, but you you do so much more. And I'm really you know impressed by by you guys in general. Anyway, that's enough sucking up for me. <laughs> no, um, no, no, please continue if you need to. <laughs> yeah. So what what do you expect? You know, this Q to be this. You know, the mirror match. I think these are four of the the more powerful classes. It's definitely a uh, couple of flex choices. I've seen warriors start to struggle recently, uh, at least in my experience. So that to me is deck number four these days although hunter used to be the warrior has sort of shifted to kind of class four uh with druid paladin and priest kind of filling in that that deck four option uh but yeah uh, i would say i mean it's it's funny because warrior as you mentioned has been falling out of favor a little bit i think part of that is the lack of pirate warrior you've seen pretty much anybody who plays uh you know, Warrior nowadays is playing Galakron Warrior, usually with an aggressive uh, aggressive bent to the deck because the value style Galakron kind of fell out of favor as Scion got nerfed. So it, it's mm -hmm. if you're gonna play an aggressive deck, most people are opting to play that Galakron uh, deck rather than play the Pirate Warrior. But I think Pirate Warrior still has a place. Yeah, and I have seen a couple people still, you know, trying out Control Warrior with some varied success. So maybe we'll see that you know slip its head in a little bit uh as the season progresses and people kind of want to try out new things even uh you know if the meta doesn't shift too too much um you know with these couple of new cards that we got or i guess it was 11 new cards we got this week uh, i haven't seen too much change so we'll see if maybe as more and more of these uh adventure cards come in if the meta does shift to kind of let them let them in and, and move around and, and maybe potentially change some of these decks or at least uh, introduce some of the new cards into existing decks. Yeah, I've, uh, I've I've already experimented with a few of the new cards myself. Uh, you know, it's 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 funny because obviously only one card per class this time this week around. You know, we're gonna start to see them trickle in as as time goes on here over the next few weeks. But uh, I, th I think just looking at the, the cards upcoming, there will be places for some of these cards in decks. Yeah, I mean, when I was looking through, there's there's definitely some that caught my eye. Uh, the ones that we've gotten so far, I think. I've only really seen a couple, uh, you know, we did just see the uh, I, the Fresh Scent, is that what it's called? I don't even know the name. Yes, well. Fresh Scent oh, yeah. was the new Hunter's card. Hunter card. Yeah, yeah, so we did see that uh, in, in this uh, current Highlander list. I haven't seen it too much in Highlander, but I have seen some people introducing it to mid-range, which is one of my favorite decks. Uh, so I'm really excited to, to, to play a little bit more of that. And maybe uh, it's not as bad Fresh Scent. I don't know if it pushes it into like the you know the upper tiers but at least maybe just maybe it can be playable uh and you know get some wins with it yeah i think we saw things like dire frenzy which made the b synergy decks viable that could certainly be a card that not only could could make it viable but also you know might bring dire frenzy uh like a mid-range hunter back into the fold so that's certainly a possibility uh, i do want to uh, give a quick shout out to craig of canada from you know this is from the past i'm seeing in in twitch chat that he subscribed with twitch, twitch prime which we absolutely appreciate so thank you craig uh do canada thank you very much craig and uh, that is a reminder for anybody else out there that it is free to subscribe to Twitch Prime. So, 
you know, Blizzard's leaving Twitch, but we're not. So you might want to use your Twitch Prime free <laughs> subscription with us instead. Uh, and, you know, Was anyone really using it on Blizzard? I don't we're already know. paying them so much money to no play idea. this game. <laughs> I mean, some of us are free to play, man. I don't know about that's you. True. That's, that's true. That's not me. That's absolutely not that's me. That's certainly not me. <laughs> there was a time when I had, I had, uh, you know, kept it free to play. But, you know, once you open the wall at one time, it becomes a little bit easier yep. to open the wall at more after that. Absolutely. Yeah, the most powerful card in Hearthstone is the credit card. <laughs> uh, and it, it certainly it holds true now even more than ever. The, the oh, adventure absolutely. giving you for cards as well as having expansion in that same block of time. I mean, I'm enjoying all the content. My wallet is a little upset, but I'm making it work. I'm, I, I love playing Hearthstone. I want to you know, play at the highest level and be able to, to play with every card. So uh, for me, that's what makes sense. But, uh, you know, it definitely... We'll, we'll, we'll see, you know, these players, uh, you know, now back, back on track here. Uh, we'll see if they... <clears throat> If they bring some of the same decks, do you expect some of the same decks, or do you, do you think that we'll see uh, different archetypes with these same three classes? Um, I I would say, well, we didn't see Warrior last game at all, so I, I'm i expecting to probably see two Galakron Warriors of some flavor, but uh, I think we could see the Galakron Warlock with the Conquest lineup rather than the uh, the Hero lineup here. This so new. I think I yeah. think at least one of them will probably have the Galakron uh, you know, hand, Galakron hand style warrior rather, or right. warlock rather than the zoo that we saw. Mm -hmm. And of course, we didn't see rogue either. And uh, we're, we actually have fans in now, by the way. We're only going to oh, we're going to see great. one rogue, and we're going to see one hunter, uh, as Ron Mexico will not be allowed to play hunter, and Yellow Dart will not be allowed to play rogue. Man, I nailed that. I said I could see it going with one of those, and it, we got both of them. So pff, you've gotten did. everything wrong tonight. My one guess so far nailed it you so. know so i think you should just retire from guessing at this point because you're not gonna get That's a better it. win percentage and i should just keep guessing at everything because i can't go lower than i already am. you can't you can't get any worse so yeah no, please all. by all means i'm gonna keep asking you the questions and uh you know you'll eventually get some of these right i'm sure well thanks for the uh the vote of confidence it certainly <laughs> wasn't backhanded at all no, certainly not. I, you know, I, I got a, I got a give and take. You know, five minutes ago, I was giving you high praises, and I just want to, you know, I don't want your head to get too big. So it's, it's really important. How else am I going to be able to get my shorts on and off if, uh, if, I, if my dome is too big? So, yeah, that's that's definitely a real problem. Some people, you know, they get their head too big, and and you got to get a whole new wardrobe, and it, it's not yeah, fun. Yeah, you stretch out the necks, and it's just uncomfortable. Ugh. It's just not. Yeah, it's not something I want to get involved with. But what I do want to get involved with is this second match uh, between Ron and Yellow Dart, and they are ready to go. We've seen the bands. Uh, are you ready to uh, to jump us in here? I can give them the go-ahead. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. Last night, I was able to cast uh, another one of my teammates. Uh, so it's, it's it's so much fun. I, I, I promise I do my best to not be biased. Uh, I Sometimes towards the end, if, if, if the game is over, I might, you know, express certain excitement or disappointment. But during the match itself, I will be completely, totally. I, I have no doubt that you're professional. Unbiased. Thank you very much. Not a problem. Uh, are we good? Are we going in? We Let's do this. We're going in. Let's do it. As, uh, as last time, Ron will be on the bottom when we, when we hop in here. And yellow right. dart will be on top. So uh, any, that'll be just momentary. any predictions for the first uh, first classes here? I should predict. Uh, I think I think Ron Mexico brings the rogue, uh, yeah. as it's it's just doesn't have too too many terrible matchups. And yeah, I, think, uh, I think I think, I think we'll think, see hunter for yellow dart. You think it's the hunter? So that the. the you know they got they banned a class that they are now bringing uh first they said i don't like the hunter so he must not like the hunter i'm going to play it first i don't like the rogue he must not like the rogue so i'm going to play the rogue uh yeah i i buy that i also if you do expect the hunter maybe you lean towards the warlock um i have found that war or sorry if you expect the the rogue from from ron i think the warlock is a good pick for yellow dart um that has been really successful for me on ladder into rogue uh, so we'll see if, if they're in agreement. Well, the game did start here, and that is exactly what we're getting. Uh, it's going to be oh the gosh. Rogue versus Hunter. And uh, the Hunter for Yellow Dart looks to be that, uh, you know, a Highlander-style Hunter. Uh, all I've seen so far here now is a Crystallizer. Uh, but, you know, he's got that Primordial Explorer in there, too, which is one that I have not really seen much. Is this the Dragon Hunter? Yeah, I have seen I have seen a little bit more of that recently. There's sort of two Highlander lists and two two sort of uh, groups of thought here, and uh, a lot of the, the you know professional players and higher level players have been leaning more towards 
the dragon list of late. Uh, just, uh, you know, reduce some of the secret package. You still run some of the secrets. You run uh, normally just Snake Trap and Rat Trap, which are, are generally the, the higher uh, tempo ones, the more powerful uh, secrets. And and then you have other draw engines and other ways to sort of cycle um, to allow yourself. And, and, and maybe not exactly cycle, but something like this Primordial Explorer develops, you know, more resources and value. Uh, so you're able to kind of, with the fewer draws, are able to get more value and... Uh, push that damage and we do see the second uh, praise galacron was drawn by ron mexico so this is going to not be a highlander deck it's going to actually just be the uh the, the regular style galacron deck uh you know where duplicates are going to be present interesting wait rottenest drake what is that if you're holding a dragon destroy a random enemy minion is that is that oh, a yeah. new card oh yeah that's a new card that wasn't released yet so that is something actually i haven't seen We've yet heard in heard it yeah, we've I've heard heard, heard about this. So how do you how how do you as Ron Mexico play around a card that theoretically should not exist? I, I don't know if you can. I would never expect this. Uh, th I mean, there's no dragon in hand right now, but this could deal with an Edwin, which is sometimes a huge, huge, like potential threat for this uh, this this deck. So. Uh, I, I nope, think without a nope. doubt it was the right pick there too. I mean, Malagos is just far too slow in this matchup, and there's not really any way to combo with it um, in this deck. And you usually don't want to go with the uh, the the one that gives your opponent the poisonous uh, Drake. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, and getting the two damage Lackey. There's a couple options, I guess. Just just do the trades. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yep. Uh, save no that reason Lackey to. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and there's Bran. That's a card you love to see. Not just yet, but uh, not going to be upset about having that on turn seven. No, that is... Uh, if, if you're playing the Highlander deck, he makes it go a lot of the time. So yeah, that's uh, that's a perfectly fine draw at this stage of the game. Uh, Rat Trap, y you know, Ron's not going to know exactly what, what, what secret it is here, but it is going to be prohibitive for him playing more than two cards a turn now, which we know the Rogue loves to do. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I do. I do think he'll, he'll be aware of the potential there. Um, I'm sure Ron is, you know, knows the two different sort of uh, parties of thought uh, with the the Highlander. And after seeing Primordial Explorer and Fairy Dragon, usually you're going to lean towards maybe that Dragon list. Uh, yes, so knowing definitely. that the common secrets for that are Snake and Rat. Every once in a while, there's a sprinkling of freezing, but uh, you know, I don't, don't expect. That to have happened. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind this, uh, you know, just play for, for tempo. This does live on board, or they have to take, uh, you know, from what you can tell at least, uh, the, the damage. Um, but going to be able to clear it out with backstab eviscerate or cobalt eviscerate. There's there's several ways. Or just, just sap it and ignore. I, I think the only thing I would say about sap is you know that he doesn't have the dragon in hand right now, but you don't necessarily want to give him another opportunity to have it activated, especially now you've seen it. Uh, so I think yeah. clearing it is probably the better uh, better course here if he has the means, which we which we see that he does. Yeah, it does limit you to, to what else you can do this turn. You can only play those two cards. So, uh, yeah, I think Ron, very aware that this is a very likely rat trap. Yeah, everything he's tested for right now, uh, the only two possibilities it can be is rat trap or snake trap. He hasn't actually attacked a minion yet, but he's played a minion, uh, he's played a spell, and he's attacked and uh, wasn't misdirected. So, other than that, he is pretty much almost positive that it's one. He's got to be positive it's one of the two, but I would think that he would figure it to be Rat Trap. Yeah, this is a little bit awkward of a turn. Like, you are able to Spring Paw and Faceless, but you have to double trade because of the, the five health. So, uh, I don't mind just kind of playing a minion that contests it to some degree and, and just... Uh, hitting that hero power button and there is that edwin we were talking about and this is not a bad opportunity there is a way um you know you have the sap to clear uh the the rat if you choose to do that because uh, you can kobold lackey shadow step lackey sap and play the edwin now, i do find it interesting that yellow dart has given up 
you know, both options that you would have otherwise had to deal with Edwin. You know, uh, we've seen the Spellbreaker now. We have we saw the Rottenest Drake. And it looks like, at this point, Ron is going to go ahead and play Van Cleef because he has already played three cards. And he knows that if it's going to be Rat Trap, he might as well just throw down a giant Edwin. Yeah, he might he might choose to sap this rat still. Uh, uh, but no, it does. I, think, I think you shadow step one of the one ones. Go into it. Yep. Uh, yeah, take it out. Play it even bigger. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, that, that definitely seems like a good play. You have seen, uh, like you said, the Spellbreaker and that Rot Nest. Uh, so the only really good option for the Hunter here to deal with this is a deadly shot. And you've got three other minions on board. So uh, only maybe like Unleash plus deadly shot uh, is, is a nice clear here. I guess Varanus as well could potentially yeah, uh, be able Varanus to clear it with something. Yeah, Varanus plus for sure. You'll me the Not gonna find it here though, and uh, facing 15 damage, pretty scary. Now, Ron is getting low on health himself, so he might be trying to say, "Listen, Yellow, you gotta either clear my Van Cleef, or you, you know, you're just gonna die next turn anyway." Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think I don't think he's gonna have that problem here. Yeah, so I mean, you have the option to clear this. I think uh, I think you might as well. Yeah, I don't think that pushing this damage is going to make a difference for top decks, does it? I guess if like for s somehow they clear this, I'm trying to think. Yeah, so I think we will see this just get cleared. Yeah, I think this is the right move here. You don't want to you don't want to lose any sort of you know, corruptor shenanigans or anything else. I mean, regardless of that, if this Van Cleef doesn't get removed, the game is over. Yeah, absolutely. So tracking to find it, first of all, find the deadly shot, and then to win the one. Well, you'd have to win the coin flip because Springpaw. Oh! And there it is. There it is. So Springpaw come, will come down, right? Yeah. Clear you can out spring two paw, minions. Springpaw. Um, what mana are we at right now? We're eight. Uh, we're at or eight seven. right now, I believe. So yeah, uh, so he's I think already you played. Have to <sighs> maybe considering just the Zilliax, You saw the sap, so you can like clear three minions and just leave the 12-12 the, uh, up and you have a taunt heal in the way. And still a bold, bold decision because now not only are you not taking the deadly shot, you're never getting you don't the deadly have shot it. back. Yeah. It's just not coming back. Yeah, I wonder if this is just a, a hard play to like, you have to top deck Varanis now or maybe the Alex Straza gives you something. Maybe that's sort of where the, the you know, the thought is. Um, this does put you at exactly 12, so if Sap or Backstab or anything that deals with a seal, seal of fate, that'll fate do it. Will. And that'll be game one going to Ron, the rogue, getting a win, uh, but not over for Yellow Dart. All right, so Yellow Dart, you know, bringing that, that hunter. Um, Certainly not a bad deck. The the rogue though, very very powerful. So we'll see. Uh, you know, warlock and and warrior remaining for Ron. Uh, what do you think Yellow Dart kind of expects to play into that, or just roll the dice again and and do what you can? I mean, he's now now he's seen what type of hunter it is, and he can be he can rest assured knowing it's not going to be an all out aggro deck. So if he is playing something a little bit slower, uh, you know, if he is playing like the the hand warlock, that's I think even actually slower than the Galakron version, he might be comfortable putting that down. Uh, yeah. I think that that might be a reasonable consideration here. Uh, and, and I will remind everybody who's watching that we are now in Conquest now, so that win with the deck for Ron means he can't play it again, and he's going to have to win with the other two glasses. And here is the Warlock. Yeah. But it is a Galakron uh, of some kind. It's, it's going to be the... The, the heavier Galakron as we saw Kronks and Snip Snap. Uh, that is that is not a zoo deck, my friends. Yeah, it does appear to be more of the, the hand uh, Galakron list. And yeah. uh, for Yellow Dart, yeah, what do you what do you keep for this hand? I don't know if you keep any of it. I, th yeah. I think you get rid of it all, but uh, Snip Snap's not a bad card to have. Uh, I mean, he's he's sitting there with that hand. He's saying, please just don't be playing Galakron Zoo because I do not have any way to handle the early game, which he'll be yeah. he'll be pleasantly surprised when he uh, sees these first few turns get passed. 
or pass with a yeah. tap. You, you definitely do want to be chipping away though at the warlock, especially this this list. It it, it uh, has a tendency of kind of dealing with your your big boards and and uh, eventually just stabilizing and pushing damage. So. Uh, you know, a couple of options here. He could play that Zephyrus for a three drop. I, I don't mind this with this hand. Like, you might just take Wild Growth. I think uh, you're you do not under the precious. Yeah, I think you do with the power that you've got coming up. But he just wants to curve. It looks like. Yeah, with the Sniff Sap in hand, like it's not like you needed a three drop. I think just trying to, you know, summon a, a minion to start chipping away is is what Yeldart was thinking there. I personally, I think I, I might have gone for the Wild Growth. Uh, but the Animal Companion lets you, you be a little bit more aggressive. It's just this hand is so heavy, and I want to get these seven drops down ASAP. You have a coin. Like, if you oh, Wild yeah. Growth, uh, you can coin seven into seven uh, pretty quickly. Even seven into coin nine drop uh, earlier than your opponent can. Uh, and there's <laughs> there's the other Animal Companion, the, the natural one uh, in the deck. So maybe play that one so they don't know. Maybe you do have Wild Growth. I don't know. I don't know if the advantage to not playing the one you just discovered because uh, really the options are, are pretty self-explanatory it's wild growth um uh, bright wing animal companion and bright wing are the three that you right. always get when you're playing zephyrus on two with an empty board those are the three right and so ron is as an experienced player is absolutely going to know that and if he doesn't see the uh, wild growth come down right now he's going to know that it is not wild growth <laughs> because you would want to be playing that as soon as humanly possible. So uh, so he's going to know right now that it's either Brightwing or it's Animal Companion, and uh, he can kind of plan his future turns accordingly. Yeah, wow. Well, and, and actually, that'll be the fourth Invoke card in Ron's hand. So uh, could get this Galakron online very soon. I think we'll probably see that Devoted Maniac right here. Mm -hmm. It lines up very well into the Zephyrus and, and does get him uh, progressing further towards the, uh, the Galakron. Yeah, absolutely. And that's interesting, you know, choosing to, to take the animal companion. Now you have two in the in the in the deck um, or in the hand, so uh, some some lot of potential damage there, but kind of awkward curve here. And uh, that's that's probably one you don't mind seeing. Um, nope. That uh, this probably deck the best have... one I would imagine, other than maybe Misha. Yeah, this deck doesn't have too too much healing. It does now with the uh, Dragon's Breath have extra healing that it didn't before. Uh, but it has like Dragon's Breath and Zilliax, I think, are pretty much it. Uh, besides Galakrond armor as well. But yeah, so so chip damage can be really significant. Uh, you know, Warlock also taps a good amount. So uh, all that that you know small damage can really add up. And hitting four for three mana is pretty good. I think another thing to consider, though, is that the Warlock likes to keep those Nether Breaths for actual reach if it can. So That's forcing true. them to use it on minions earlier does still help you, even if it isn't, uh, you know, yeah. uh, even, even if it feels bad letting them heal and removing some of your board, it still kind of takes away a little bit of their endgame strategy. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you there. Um... It's definitely better when they do have it for them to use it on your board than, than your face because you know you're not worried about it. And there's Galakron That's off the top. So, uh, in two turns, we could actually... Actually, next turn, you can just Galakron on seven. Yeah, That's such not? a powerful top deck. I really like seeing the Fiendish rights here. Just play it. You can tap if you want to do that as well. But uh, And then, yeah, I think we will see that. So, wow. Yeah, yeah I think, that's, I think that's, that's quite a curve. Yeah, because then you can Kronks the next turn right after that. Like, this is just so, so strong. Yeah, this is probably as, as good as you can get with this this deck, as strong as it gets early on. Uh, choosing to double trade with the... Uh... That will pull Zilliax. Uh, or, oh, no, it's not going to pull Zilliax. He is running Dragon's Bane in this deck, so it's the mech. So it was a 50-50 to pull Zilliax. Yeah, I think that's fine. Like I said, the coin seven into seven, you're able to clear off this five five. Um, but now you're about to face a giant board with that Galakron being fully active. This is going to be hard to deal with. It's going to come down to what these these demons look like, I think. Well, let's see, because I I don't see any way that he doesn't run it out right here. Yeah. Not the biggest hit, but I mean no. it could be worse. Oh, wow, Fiendish Servant. I is that also a new card? I think that is, right? The, yes, that is a new card. Fiendish Servant. Yep, the one mana two one. Give this minions 
attack to a fr random friendly minion on its death. I don't. I don't think that's been released yet either, right? I think that's being no. released in another wing. So yeah, and we've seen yeah. two cards now in this match uh, that haven't actually been officially released. They're not uh, collectible cards just yet, but you can discover them or get them off of effects like this. So uh, you know, it get is an playable in, in the solo adventure right now. If you play the uh, mm -hmm. play solo adventure, you do have Phoenix Servant in one of your decks. So. Uh, you know, not a completely unknown card if you haven't been paying attention to the to the releases, but still. Right, right. Wow, and uh, you're just facing 16 damage right now and with the Krogs. Krogs just does it. Nether Breath does it. This that's lethal. Uh, once again, that is two nothing. Ron having a really really powerful. Uh, start there for the Warlock, able to just continue, and that is a quick 2-0. Uh, uh, now we're going into to game three. Um, so the only remaining deck for um, <clears throat> for Ron Mexico will be that Warrior. We'll see if that Warrior, or if Yeldar's going to be able to sweep it with, with his classes. Yeah, I wonder, uh, I mean, like we said at the top, I don't imagine this being anything but a Galakrond Warrior, uh, mm -hmm. since it is the most, uh, well, I guess I should say the Highlander Warrior has started the increase in popularity, uh, something that I forgot about when we talked about it before, but yeah. uh, it's still a little unproven in my in my experience. Yeah, I would say my experience has been the same. So I do expect the, the just the, the Galakrond, um, the only two different builds I've seen or the two different styles are, you know, Armor Smith or No Armor Smith are the two popular ones. Um, and I have actually just seen the boom, the Bomb Wrangler uh, just today for the oh, first yeah. time. I uh, I will I will admit I ran that in one of my decks this week. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Blood, Bloodsworn Mercenary tells me that it is not the value uh, value version. This is the aggressive Galakrond. Yeah, and. Uh, Finding two invokes already, but the big struggle for this warrior, from what I've seen, is draw, because you can really run out of steam. So, you know, things like Battle Rage help with that a lot, but uh, not in the hand just yet. So we'll see um, if he's able to kind of leverage the cards that he's getting right now for that victory. Um, and choosing not to coin out the Ritual Chopper, because nothing really good to follow up and... Uh, I, I agree. I agree with holding the coin on that. I mean, he's got a decent uh, set of cards here going forward, but uh, for now, you know, Yellow Dart's struggle with the Hunter. I think it's. I think it's fair to go ahead and hold that chopper for this turn. And yeah, we should. We should mention Yellow Dart is going to live or die on the back of this Hunter here too, because he is just going to try and get it through, or he's going to say say goodbye after three games. Yeah. So this Stormhammer is actually a, another. Uh, reason this dragon deck it's sort of that that you know 30th card but it does so so much um you know you're gonna have a dragon in hand that's playable with this twilight drake or the spellkin there's uh, i don't know exactly what one cost spells you're looking for but it does help you curve out a little bit here you're probably gonna play phase dog or here pound next turn into maybe a spellkin one one uh, man is thinking turn. tracking probably you've got the twin spell Arcane, one damage shot yeah, there's not. Uh, there's a some beast ones as well. There's the oh beast wrath. Yep. Beast, plus, yeah. plus two plus o, uh, immune. Yep. Yeah, I don't think the hunter ones are quite that exciting, but uh, now actually maybe you lean towards the storm hammer. You don't lose durability, and you're able to clear off this bomb wrangler. I think that's the right move. It does flow to mana, but uh, I mean yeah. the alternatives are spellbreaker, which is meh in this situation, and then light. Well, you drinker. could face dark. Oh, face power. Does, I about the face yeah, I, li I like that uh, quite a lot as well. You know, um, you really want to use your mana when you can. And what secret did we get this time? We got Rat Trap. Uh, so probably not going to do too much just yet. But uh, Battle Rage drawn for Ron Mexico last Ooh. turn. So that could activate something soon. And that's four damage. Yeah, he four extra the damage. Four damage for sure. And here comes the shield. So he'll clear off the Phase Stalker, which I think is an absolute must. Deadly shot pickup for Yellow Dart, which uh, could come in handy. Yeah, it's not too bad. Something to mention is we are now at two invokes, so that Scion of Ruin is activated. A simple step. 
and you do see Battle Rage in hand, which we did discuss earlier. So Ron has the option to go ahead and refill. Uh, you know, he could if if he can wait till like turn nine and play the Scion plus Awaken plus Battle Rage, boom, he just gets a bunch of cards in hand. But now he's got that Inner Rage too. Inner Rage plus Corcoran plus Bloodsworn Mercenary is a lot of burst yeah, damage. Two turns, that's a lot of damage. Uh, but the question is, what do you do this turn? Um, and w looking at those spells, you know, we have Beast Within and Arcane Shot, so nothing too great. I guess the Beast Within can combo with the Life Drinker. Um, uh, yeah, it definitely has a place here in this game, I think, but I don't know if that's exactly what you were hoping to see. I think tracking really would have been the ideal pickup for uh, for Yellow Dart off of that, that spell kit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, now now you've, you've sort of got this choice. Um, you can actually... Uh, it's plus one, plus one, right? So that's not quite enough damage. Right, and I think if you're throwing Dragon Fane down, you are intending yeah. to use your hero you're power here. You're going for the 50-50 to clear off the 4-5, I think, or I guess it's a 33% chance, a 33, and he, he hit it. it. Yeah, oh, that's, that's exactly what you want to see. Um, hmm. This is going to be able to be cleared off, but it's going to cost a couple of resources. Uh, either an Inner Rage or a uh, Cork Run or potentially... Potentially... Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess you can probably, like, Cork Run... I don't know, this is an interesting turn. You kind of want to Battle Rage as well. So, like, do you ever Cork Run Inner Rage and Battle Rage for two? And then just clear off the 3-5? But then you're you're summoning the Rat, so it's kind of awkward as well. Yeah, the, the, the Rat is actually going to do a lot of work here. So we, you might just see Inner Rage plus Blood Sword. Yeah, I think it was either that or or plus Corcoran Elite Will by itself. You, would you ever? Yeah, so no Battle Rage, so playing around the Rat Trap. Uh, it was pretty juicy there. You can get three, but I think making the right call, you didn't have a way to clear off the 6-6 six, six with the 5-1, so. And now Awaken is not a dead card in hand, but you definitely don't want to use it if you're killing off your own Scion. Uh, so we'll see Stormhammer here for Yellow Dart. And Snip Snap to combo with it. Uh, Kind of maybe like the life drinker instead. Uh, probably oh, he's giving he's the arcane shot, shot yep, to clear the mind. five one and then clear the three three with the weapon is what my guess is. Yeah, I think that 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 is preferable. And now Ron is running out of steam a little bit. You still we're looking at twelve damage in the hand, so or actually uh, eleven damage in the hand with the double uh, cork run and the awaken. Um, so not quite enough, but. Starting to get there, and, and there's not too much heal in the Hunter deck. There's Zilliax, and there's that Life Drinker. At this point, uh, Ron is 100% sure that it's Rat Trap, by the way. He's now tested every single uh, every single secret in the deck. So he knows right now Rat Trap just limits him at the top uh, of how many cards he can play unless he's going for lethal. Absolutely, and this, this pickup is, is not bad. The Faceless Corruptor lets you do... Uh, some interesting things if you if you choose to, or uh, probably just going to see Life Drinker. Uh, and how do you deal with this uh, four three? Just deadly shot, I guess, and uh, push the damage that you can. Mm. Yeah, I think I think Yellow Dart knows that he needs to end this game probably within the next turn or two. Uh, Ron has so much burst potential, especially if he picks up Galakron here uh, this next turn. You know. He's going to have four minions that are humongous in his hand. Any one of those could be Leroy. Yeah, let's see what comes off the top for Ron. This could Shield. make or break the game. Shield does help a little bit, uh, at I, least to, I to think keep that's, you alive. Yeah, I think that's a fine but... play this turn. Or you might Battle Rage first. Yeah, just to draw one card. Or do you ever just, like, you're, you're looking at six damage here at 12, so... You know, six damage kills you. Do you ever just Kronk's hero power? Then you're alive to kill command, but you're not alive to. Actually, you're not alive. Or, you're yeah, alive you're to alive zero at... power. Yeah. Well, yeah. She, no, you're don't... alive at one to kill command, right? So if if he if he Kronk's this turn, he's taking he's taking eight on board plus the three that we know or the five that we know for the, the five. Command. Yeah. So if he if he Kronk's hero power, yeah, he'll be at one. He'll be at uh, one, but then something like Brand kills you, so it's probably not the, the choice. Right. So yeah, I think Battle Rage, play the shield. 
Uh, now you're actually fully invoked, so when you do get the the, uh, the Galakrond, if you get to that point. I, I don't think we're going to see if he gets the Galakrond. I think he either draws it this turn, or he it's or the game's over. Your magic yeah, and that will actually yeah, uh, oh, be dude, lethal for a Yellow Dart. Right here, yeah. uh, with the, the kill command, hero power is going to get over the top here. And that is one to two now. Uh, Yellow Dart starting to claw his way back against this warrior, which I mentioned has been struggling recently. Uh, so I, what do you expect him to, to play next? Do you think he goes for the Warlock or just go for the Warrior Mirror at this point? If he's playing the Zoo, I think he goes for the Warlock because you can get in under the Warrior. Uh, but if he's not playing that, I think he's going to go with the, with the Mirror. Yeah, no, I, I could see that. It, it is tough. Like the mirror is, is obviously it comes down to tech cards and, and you know, draw and, and, you know, the play. But I think both players are pretty capable here. Uh, so sometimes you want to save that for last and, and get as many points as you can. But if the Warlock is not lined up quite well into it, then maybe we will see that mirror first. And we will. So that probably tells us that it's not Zoo. Um, or at least not comfortable with the Zoo into the Warrior for... Uh, we did miss Yellow the true, true mirror, though, because we're seeing Deathwing versus Garrosh instead of Deathwing versus Deathwing. That's true. That's true. But what we did see is Ron Mexico is running Barista in this deck, yeah. uh, which is kind of a relic of that value cron style Galakron deck. So, uh, you know, that might be, I guess, maybe like a tech choice here if he was seeing something in particular uh -huh. uh, with, 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 with Yellow Dart's lineup and... I, I like Barista myself, but it's not as potent with the Scion of Ruin yeah. and more mana. Yeah, we'll see if that helps or hurts him in this matchup. Uh, you know, was able to mulligan it away, but that could have been any other card um, that maybe you would have wanted. So we'll see if that makes a difference. It, it probably won't unless we get to this hyper late game, but uh, right now only one invoke for Ron in hand. Yeldart has two available. But uh, Ron has the the Galakron, so yeah, bit know, of just a, a couple of turns. Slow hand for both players, though. Yeah, Yellow Dart's starting to curve out here, though. He's got the uh, the Ritual Chopper next turn, um, then can sort of choose what to do from there. It's a couple of options: either can coin out something like the Corkron and go from there, or uh, maybe even just play a three-three. Sometimes you just want to fight for board in this matchup. Yeah, I think I think we'll just see the chopper. Yeah, coin coin is definitely a uh, a nice asset to have if you're yellow dart, especially with Ron Mexico not really taking any sort of initiative uh, in this game. So yeah, he'll just go ahead and uh, draw first blood. Oh, and a ritual chopper of his own. But I think you yeah. might be more preferable to playing snip snap at this point if uh, if it were me. Yeah, the snip snap is is pretty good. It does line up well for for yellow dart if he wants to coin out this cork run. Uh, and able to clear off most of this. Uh, and then there's, you know, not too many answers. Uh, Awakens obviously helps, or Ritual Chopper, uh, which we do see for Ron. But, uh, uh, or you can hold on to the coin and, and wait till, uh, uh, you know, maybe just curve out a little bit. Uh, choosing to go for that, maybe even go face and just ignore this. You're still a turn away from Zilliax, and that's exactly what Yeldart decided to do here. I think I like that decision. Uh, he's He's got the initiative right now and there's you know you know that ron's going to want to try and clear that four or three so he's not taking repetitive damage so you sit there and say all right you know either you use your face uh, if you happen to galakrond uh, which i'm totally fine with or uh you know i just get another four damage in there next turn yeah uh i do expect probably this ritual chopper um it deals with that nicely and you keep your your two oh interesting so choosing actually to clear it this way that uh, gives push it the maximum the damage, damage push. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. yeah. Rather than soaking, uh, you know, an extra damage with the ritual chopper, I, I understand that decision. It it doesn't feel great, but I understand it. Mm -hmm. It does mean you're you can't hear power that turn. I don't know if that's going to actually uh, make a difference, but Yellow Dart did uh, have the Galakrond Awakens on the return. I think did you just top deck that if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, that was that was uh from what I, I I think that was definitely a top deck and that actually helped him curve out really nicely here. Uh, already gonna be a two invoke, so one uh, with the shield of Galakron in hand, that's three, and we're getting awfully close uh, to a fully invoked 
Galakrond and the Kronx could potentially draw it, or if he's able to find it beforehand, um, we'll be able to play it on on curve potentially. Uh, but on the other side, Ron is at two now and has two more in hand. Could actually play Galakrond on seven uh, if he chooses to play the Ritual Chopper Awakens here. Yeah, that was a that was a great pickup for Ron to be able to grab the Town Crier, pull the Devoted Maniac, uh, thin his deck out, and still continue to progress the uh, the Galakrond. See, I see no reason not to uh, Scion Ritual Chopper here. Uh, that seems like probably your best option uh, to maximize your hand up. He's gonna go with Awaken. Yeah, I think I think I like the Awaken Ritual Chopper solely because this lets you play Galakrond on seven, uh, fully invoked. That's fair. Yep. I thought he was a three for some reason. I was looking at Yellow Dark's side of the board. Yeah, so now Yellow Dark falling a little bit behind. No Galakron in hand, so going to have to play this uh, Kronks to, to draw it. Um, it does give him the option now with his with uh, Perrant to clear with his Galakron and actually finding the Kronks to follow up the next turn. Ron is, is having some good success here with his Galakrons and finding the right tool. Wow. Oh boy. So now he and can, a giant taunt. Oh yeah, he can play that taunt next turn and just, you know, if he wants to wait for something to damage the Corcron and go for the uh, Corcron plus Bloodsworn combo. Yeah, might not even have to do that. Uh, I'm trying to count. We're, we're looking at six damage right now. So with the Corcron and the hero power, uh, if there's no taunt in the way, I think that's just lethal, and, right? And, or and no yeah. taunt and no, uh, yeah, no hero power. No yeah, hero power. Yeah. Well, uh, but he does oh, find does his very Galakron. own Galakron on the other side, so still in this uh, certainly for for Yellow Dart. Yeah, he found it via the uh, the Kronks last turn, so unfortunately he won't have the Kronks to use here. But oh, the inner rage! Yeah. Oh no, that's it. That's that's definitely lethal, right? Cor yeah. Corcron in a rage. Yep, that's twenty damage. What's uh, more, mercenary? That is, that is. That is a, uh, a twenty-six damage turn. Your flaws are your and that'll be it. Ron Mexico getting the three-one over Yellow Dart. Uh, very well played by both players. Uh, sometimes it, it goes away, sometimes it doesn't, and it, it felt like the, everything was falling into place for Ron there. Uh, you yeah, know, we saw multiple times. Down with the Galakrond on like seven or eight uh, fully invoked. And, uh, you know, it's very hard to beat when beat it when it, when that kind of thing happens. So uh, congratulations to Ron uh, and, and his team to, to sort of uh, jump into the lead, I believe, with this win because uh, it finished 3-1, right? It did finish 3-1. And, uh, you know, Dad Legend did have the lead at the outset of that series 4-2. to two. So uh, that's going to go ahead and swing it back. Uh, to a 6-5 lead now six, five, for 4th yeah. and inches, provided there were no other games played uh, during the duration of this cast. And uh, we do have Ron Mexico hopping in here. We can go ahead and chat him up a little bit, get his okay, thoughts great. on the game. Uh, you know, and you can direct some of that Philly anger at him if you want to as well. While we're <laughs> we're going to throw throw trash and stuff at uh, and snowballs at Santa, right? You know, I, I try not to judge what you guys do. You throw trash at Santa and Snowball and Ice. Uh, we film people from the wrong sideline and whatnot. You know, it's like six of one, really. <laughs> it's all the same. It's all the same. Uh, all right, we get we get Ron in here. I'm excited to, to hear what he says uh, about that match. I think, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the similar choices there for both players as far as brings and, and lineups, a couple of different tech choices. But in the end, coming down to, uh, you know, just, just getting – getting the, the plays to work out. Uh, Ron, congratulations. I'm, I'm not salty at all that you beat my teammate. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. I appreciate it. Good to have uh, you here. Thanks for yeah. thanks for playing on stream as well. Uh, you know, definitely well played there. Uh, any any thoughts uh, as far as like, uh, you know, lineup choices, key order, any, anything that kind of, you know, that kind of ran through your head there as you started up the match? Um, the thing I was most surprised by actually was the Highlander Hunter. Uh, I know it seems to be kind of making a comeback, but, uh, I, I've been trying to make it work for like forever and I haven't been able to get it to work. So I felt like that was maybe the weak point in Yellow Dart's lineup. 
Yeah, it definitely seemed to struggle here. Um, I actually have seen a lot of uh, pro and like high level players favoring that Highlander, especially that uh, dragon build. But uh, you know, not not finding too much success here. Uh, actually, from from a lot of uh, players I, I have um, you know talked to, it seems like the warrior is the one that that's really struggling. We saw it, it almost kind of fail you there, but but finding the right curve, getting Galkron fully online turn seven in that game. Uh, whew, yeah, that, that was game. straight up ridiculous. Like I was going for a different game plan, and then I found the other invoke, and I was like, oh, oh, Galakrond on seven, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's happened. <laughs> Seems good. <laughs> and it certainly was good, and you were able to find the cork run to buff that guy up, and then the inner rage off the top in the end to just, like, really, like, oh, just the icing on top of that. That was, you know, it, 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 it felt nice, uh, you know, as, as being on that side. Uh, like, that was my play. You know, I love seeing those kind of, uh, you know, big, big numbers just go to the face. I think that was 26 damage in one turn. Uh, yeah, it was yeah. pretty ridiculous. I mean, the inner rage off the top, like, I actually only run one inner rage in my warrior deck. So yeah. that was pretty ridiculous. That I mean, I feel like I was already kind of in a winning position at that point, but at the same time, it was like, oh, here's easy lethal. Yeah, you yeah. went from a two turn kill to a. I'm, I'm winning right now. <laughs> it was essentially to uh, like. overkill, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, definitely uh, getting that Galakron online first uh, is just so huge in that matchup. Yeah, honestly, I felt like I kind of just high rolled a lot in three <laughs> wins, like a 12-12 Edwin. OK, there's that game. Um, fully invoked Galakron in, on the Warlock side, like pretty early. And then um, I was not armoring. I almost armored in the game because it looked like he was setting up lethal mm -hmm. but i was like i bet the taunt's gonna be enough and i need to find my own reverse lethal and so i finally pulled the the battle rage and then dropped the taunt and i did actually find lethal on the next turn he had to have it and then he he did but uh of course the next game is just full invoke galakrond on seven it's like oh, okay <laughs> i guess i can just win by getting three high rolls that that's a way to do it I'm glad you yeah. actually brought the Edwin up because that was, this was something we discussed during the cast. And if you go back and watch the VOD, you'll see it too. Um, the, during the the tracking decision that he had, he opted to throw away Deadly Shot. And we said, you know, big Edwin, Deadly Shot's kind of what you want to see there. But then not only did he do that, he got rid of the uh, Spellbreaker the turn before you were able to, uh, uh, you know, that you, that you played Edwin. So it was like all the options he had to get rid of that Edwin magically disappeared the turn before you slammed down a giant Edwin. <laughs> yeah, he was like, no, he doesn't brutal. have Edwin in hand. He would have probably done it by now. And then boom, there it goes. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, the one thing I felt like I really kind of made a big mistake on was taking you, Sarah. I just, I got greedy. That's all right. You know, I think when you see four numbers at the bottom of your Edwin, you feel pretty good about your chances. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was extra ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, you have any more questions for Ron here? Or should we, uh, you know, tie a ribbon on this? This uh, amazing, really fun, awesome. What did we call this show? Salty Saturday? Salty Saturday. Sa absolutely. There we I, go. I not guess salty we'll, at all. No, we're, well, I'm, not, I'm not. I had a great time watching <laughs> both of these games. I have no stake in either of them. So it was just entertainment for me. But I guess we can throw it over to Ron if there's anything else he'd like to say or any other shout outs he'd like to give before we wrap up. Uh, just, I appreciate everything you guys do, uh, getting, you know, the stream set up and casting for everybody. It's a lot of hard work and I don't feel like you get enough appreciation, but from the community at large and definitely from myself, I feel like I speak for most people when I say we really appreciate everything you guys do. Oh, thank you so much. And, and Donde, thank you for... Thanks to us. That's, <laughs> that's the nicest thing possible. Man, he's like... He goes, every every week, he goes from being like my favorite player to like even more of my favorite player in THL. <laughs> <laughs> yep, definitely, hey, uh, I just really, like playing Hearthstone. You guys give me an opportunity to play more Hearthstone. I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> Not only do we get... Yeah, play more and, uh, and you know, get, get streamed too. So definitely glad to help. Right on. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on and uh, great play there uh, from both of you.
and uh, congratulations and, and best of luck in the rest of the series. Well, not really, because we're going to beat you, but, um, <laughs> you know, best of luck beyond, you know, I hope you enjoy the losses. I hope they're not like too one sided and they're fun games and everyone has a good time. Uh, but at the end, you know, hopefully dad legend wins. Right, right, of course. It's still yeah. a close right. match. This is, this just makes it six to five. And uh, I don't know, yeah. is, is Dad Legend going to pin all their hopes on the currently 0-2 Myanodon? Oh, my God. Uh, we were just talking earlier about your hero record. I, I'm feeling this pressure in Legacy. I'm doing great in pro, but for some reason, Legacy this season, uh, not starting out too strong for me. So hopefully I can turn it around. Uh, my team might need me this week to do so. They've been able to kind of carry me so far. But uh, with the Eldar taking that loss... Oh, nice. I actually missed my chance to talk some trash to you because you were in the two seed. You were just tanking to avoid playing me. I see how it is. That's, yeah, that's what it was. It's <laughs> certainly what it was. There's no way I would have you know, won this game. Uh, actually, if it went the same way, I don't think there was a way I was going to win the game. No, if, but... I, if I drew like that, <laughs> you were probably going to see the same kind of thing. Yeah, so the result was probably the same. So maybe, uh, uh, how do you pronounce your three seed's name, by the way? I wasn't sure. Do you know? Oh, uh, your mum cat. Your mum ked. Okay. So, uh, you know, maybe I'll have have the luck against your mum ked and, and we'll keep this really, really tight. Uh, at least that's what I'm, I'm hoping for. I hope this does come Oh, down. he's you good. Are... You're going to have your hands full. <laughs> I think you guys are a great team. Um, and uh, I think we're, we're good competitors. So uh, definitely looking forward to the rest of the matches this week. And, uh, as, of course, also in the Hero Series, the match that we watched was also really really uh you know a nice match and uh, also a very close series so uh good choices john day yeah th and thank you guys for uh, everyone was so responsive this week in setting up matches uh it was, it was it was we were overflowing with options so it was it was nice uh you know hopefully that continues as a trend throughout the rest of the season and uh, people are just excited to play on stream uh speaking of that tomorrow's uh, stream we are back i actually have a sunday stream again which is great Woo! uh lotus knight will be hosting that alongside twos uh, and it's going to be Markshire versus Berserk at 8 p.m. Uh, that's a pro matchup for uh, Aeon versus FTL. And then Super Murloc will make his second appearance of the week versus It's Me, Mike V at 9 p.m. approximately afterwards. That's a hero matchup. So feel free to tune into that uh, tomorrow night. And uh, hopefully those matches are just as exciting as the ones we just witnessed. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I know I'm going to be watching that uh, and hope to see everybody else there. So thanks again, everybody. And, uh, you know, take care. Have a good, good rest of your weekend. And good luck in your matches. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye.